So this lecture is continuing the topic of iterations. And we've already covered, it assumes we've already covered uh, the topic of for loops, which is one, one uh, style or one brand of iteration. Um, now we're going to cover the topic of while loops, uh, which are another. Um, so before I start, I want to do a comparison and build on what we've done before. So let's talk about, let's do the uh, block diagram for for loops first. Uh, as we could before, uh, you have some code block and then you lead into um, the for loop, which we're using sort of this shape for the for loop. And you have the for loop here. And then you have for some variable equals some vector. Okay? And as long and what happens is that variable traverses down that vector. Um, and as long as that variable is in that vector, uh, you execute the block of code that is inside that for loop. And you do it iteratively until that variable uh, has gone through every value in that vector. And once that happens, you are done, D-O-N-E. -N -E. Um, and then you continue on your execution with whatever blocks of code may be in your script or function. So that's uh, that's the idea of a for loop. Now let's contrast, compare and contrast that to a while loop. So this is for. And then over here we're going to look at the while loop. Uh, and so the while loop is a little different. Uh, once again you're executing some block of code. Uh, let's call this code block one code block one and then the follow-up code block is called that code block two down here and then let's call this uh, code block loop and I'll, I'll get to that in a second so that's code block loop um, then let's go over here the while loop requires some things and I'll, I'll illustrate those as we go I'm going to put this here and then continue on with the diagram and then I'll come back and fill in uh, the explanation so the while loop includes this it needs a it needs an initializing block of code and so that's what this is so this this is actually a part of the while loop from an operational standpoint uh, not from a definition standpoint uh, MATLAB doesn't require that you put this here but from to try to get the while loop to operate properly you need this block of code and that's the initializing block um, so let me put initialize in here, initialize there. Okay, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Then you hit the while loop here, and the while loop has some logical, it tests for some logical expression to be true or not. So it's looking for a logical expression. Um, this is what I call the investigate block, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, if that logical expression is true, then you execute the code that's in the code block loop or in the in, you execute the code that's in the code block inside of the loop and you come back around just like you did with the for loop you see the similarities here okay? and then if this logical expression or when that logical expression evaluates to false then you're you exit the loop Okay, and then execute whatever code block you have further on down in your script or, or function. Okay, now, um, so there's sort of a, a mnemonic here I want to I want to put out. Uh, so this the while loop has three parts. It has one part is is the initializing part, and that's this part here. So this part here, you actually. Uh, initialize you have to initialize the loop okay this part here with the lot with by use of the logical expression you actually inspect the loop variable so here you initialize the loop variable here you inspect the loop variable okay uh, to see if it has reached some terminating condition or not. And then inside this code block, somewhere, you must increment the loop variable. 
So you got three things going on. You have to initialize, inspect, and increment your loop variable. The contrast to the for loop over here is that the for loop itself did it all for you. And this is why um, I've referred to the for loop sort of being the training wheels uh, for iteration, while the while loop were taking off the training wheels, and now you have to do these three things yourself. Initialize your loop variable, inspect your loop variable, and then increment your loop variable. There also, there's a little bit more to just incrementing your loop variable. You have to increment your loop variable so that your loop will at some point terminate. Your loop has to at some point terminate or if this thing will go on. If this loop variable, if this logical expression, excuse me, if this logical expression never equals false, then this loop will continue on forever or until your computer runs out of memory. Okay? Uh, then you have to hit control C and then that will stop the execution of this loop. We call that an infinite loop. Um, and so this logical expression at some point in time, you have to increment your loop variable so that at some point in time this logical expression will be false so that the loop will exit eventually. It doesn't have to be right away, it could be a long time, but at some point in time this logical expression needs to equal false um, and that's the general way you work the while loop. Um, there are some conditions when you don't want this to ever equal false, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, so once again you initialize your loop variable you inspect it to see if you've reached your terminating condition. And then when you're inside the loop, you must increment your loop variable so that at some point in time, this, your loop, uh, this logical expression will be uh, false and that will terminate the loop. So those are sort of the three things that you must do inside of a while loop. So you have much more to manage in a while loop than you do in a for loop. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, look at the same examples that I gave for the for loop. Um, and I'm actually going to um, write those down and I'm going to put them side by side um, and re-implement those same examples using a while loop so that you can see uh, the while loop operating in environments that are familiar to you.